dude, sorry I didn't offer to help yesterday. I was I should have come down and I was feeling bad about that, so I just wanted to if you come if you come on those days, shout out, because I'll come I'll come and just you know, if nothing else, I'll bring a coffee for you or something like a different pastor. You know, bring a, whatever you want, you know, if you want a Chick-fil-A or something. You know, if nothing else, I can just sit here and yak and and, and get you some, you know, refreshments for a day for the dude helping to fix the sound system at the end as, as thanks. <laughs> so, how's it going? I will let you be. Sorry, didn't mean to interrupt. <laughs> Lord be with you. Let us pray. Bless us, O God, with a reverent sense of your presence, that we may be at peace and may worship you with all of our mind and spirit. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Good morning. And welcome to Annapolis Lutheran Church on this beautiful Sunday morning. As always, it's a pleasure to worship alongside of you. On Saturday, this coming Saturday, seven of our youth and two adults, Amanda Vestlage and myself, I do consider myself an adult nowadays, we will be traveling to Pittsburgh to participate in our annual youth mission trip. We will be recognizing them today and commissioning them after the hymn of the day. Are there any other announcements? That. Good morning. Good morning. I'm Pat Uncle, your volunteered fellowship committee chairman. And I got two announcements. Uh, August 21st will be the Lutheran Mission Society's Crab Feast. And we're going to be facilitating, uh, get, get it all set up. Young lady right there on the edge will be the facilitator of it. And she can take care of it. Uh, September 21st, the annual picnic. Yay. And we'll get some more information on that when I get back from vacation. And, of course, another date of most importance is August 28th. That's my birthday. And any cash or checks of the most accepted. Thank you. One more date, August 11th. We're uh, hosting a Red Cross blood drive, and we invite all of you to come and donate your blood if you can. Uh, it's from 12 to 6 o'clock, and you can register on um, redcross.com org, org. It's in the bulletin. Thank you. Thank you, Debbie, and thank you, Pat. It's certainly nice and a blessing to see ministry flourishing in our, in our congregation here again. Uh, after uh, service today, we invite you to our gym. Uh, for coffee and for conversation and fellowship time. We will also be holding an adult forum session and you're of course invited to that as well. Lastly, uh, our music director, Emma, would like to invite us to sing along to the prelude today. And that's Shall We Gather at the ri River and that's the With One Voice, the blue hymnal, uh, hymn number 690. So you're invited to sing along Two with verses, the prelude. Two, the first verse and the last verse. Let us now prepare our hearts and minds for worship as we sing the prelude.
merciful God. test.
you may hear our petitions. In all things, help us to ask for that which pleases you. Through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Our first reading today is from Jeremiah, 23rd chapter, beginning with the first verse. Woe to the shepherds who destroy and scatter the sheep of my pasture, declares the Lord. Therefore, thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, concerning the shepherds who care for my people, you have scattered my flock and have driven them away, and you have not attended to them. Behold, I will attend to you for your evil deeds, declares the Lord. Then I will gather the remnant of my flock out of all the countries where I have driven them, and I will bring them back to their fold, and they shall be fruitful and multiply. I will set shepherds over them who will care for them, and they shall fear no more, nor be dismayed. Neither shall any be missing, declares the Lord. Behold, the days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will rise up for David a righteous branch, and he shall reign as king and deal wisely, and shall execute justice and righteousness in the land. In his days Judah will be saved, and Israel will dwell securely. And this is, by the, na this is the name by which we he will be called. The Lord is our righteousness. Word of the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We'll read Psalm 23 responsively. I will begin. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not be in want. He makes me lie down in green pastures and leads me beside still waters. He revives my soul and guides me along right pathways for his name's sake. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil. For you are with me, for your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You spread a table before me in the presence of those who trouble me. You have anointed my head with oil, and my cup is running over. Surely your goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. The second reading is from Ephesians, second chapter, beginning with the 11th verse. Therefore, remember that at one time you Gentiles in the flesh called the un uncircumcision by what is called the circumcision, which is made in the flesh by hands. Remember that you were at that time separated from Christ, alienated from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers to the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. But now in Christ Jesus, you who once were far off have been brought near by the blood of Christ. For he himself is our peace, who has made us both one and has broken down in his flesh the dividing wall of hostility by abolishing the law of commandments expressed in ordinances that he might create in himself one new man in place of the two, so making peace and might reconcile us both to God in one body through the cross, thereby killing the hostility. And he came and preached peace to you who were far off and peace to those who were near. For through him, we both have access in one spirit to the Father. So then you are no longer strangers and aliens, but you are fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of God, built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the cornerstone, in whom the whole structure, being joined together, grows into a holy temple in the Lord. In him you also are being built into a dwelling place for God by the Spirit. The word of the Lord. The Holy God. 
Gospel according to St. Mark, the sixth chapter. The apostles returned to Jesus and told him all that they had done and taught. And he said to them, Come away by yourselves to a desolate place and rest a while. For many were coming and going, and they had no leisure even to eat. And they went away in the boat to a desolate place by themselves. Now many saw them going and recognized them. And they ran there on foot from all the towns and got there ahead of them. When he went ashore, he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion on them, because they were like sheep without a shepherd. And he began to teach them many things. And when it grew late, his disciples came to him and said, This is a desolate place, and the hour is now late. Send them away to go into the village in the countryside and buy themselves something to eat. But he answered them, You give them something to eat. And they said to him, Shall we go and buy two hundred denarii worth of bread and give it, to, give it to them so that they can eat? And he replied, How many loaves do you have? Go and see. And when they had found out, they said, Five loaves and two fish. Then he commanded them all to sit down in groups on the green grass. So they sat down in groups by hundreds and by fifties. And taking the five loaves and the two fish, he looked up to heaven and said a blessing, and broke the loaves and gave them to the disciples to set before the people. And he divided the two fish among them all. And they all ate, and they were all satisfied. And he took up twelve baskets full of broken pieces and of the fish. And those who ate the loaves were 5,000 men. The Gospel of the Lord. Let us pray. Gracious God, let the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. There are several common phrases which carry inherent contradictions. We call these words or phrases oxymorons. Militant pacifism, good grief, open secret are a few of such phrases that contradict each other. In today's gospel passage, we come across what appears to be an oxymoron when Jesus tells his disciples to find rest in a desolate place. Rest and desolation do not exactly fit. Desolation, or desolate, coming from the Greek Arameos, is also the word for wilderness. It's the same Greek word. In the Bible, the wilderness is the place where robbers hide, demons dwell, and all vegetation dies. It is the place where the Israelites wandered aimlessly for 40 years. It is the place where Jesus was tempted by the devil. Are you feeling restful yet? For anyone living in the first century Mediterranean world, the wilderness was a place of pure chaos. Chaos. It is not typically a place that we would associate with resting. Yet, here in today's passage, Jesus boldly orders his disciples to get rest, that is, comfort and peace, among the chaos and the uncertainty of the desolate place. I think that we know from experience the contradictory nature. 
between rest and desolation. How easy is it to find rest in chaos and in uncertainty? How easy is it to find rest when you receive news of a terminal illness? How easy is it to find rest when the world is changing so fast that we can barely keep up? How easy is it to find rest when the devil finds your weakness and relentlessly exploits it? How easy is it to find rest in division? Indeed, how easy is it to find rest in desolation? King David was no stranger to this. He was no stranger to desolation and chaos. As a young man, he fought against the Philistines and their champion, Goliath. After gaining fame for defeating Goliath, he faced the calamity of civil war with King Saul, splintering his friendship with Saul's son, Jonathan. After gaining the throne, after all of this chaos in his life, he gained the throne, but he faltered, falling into lust, murder, and adultery. He knew chaos. He knew uncertainty. He knew division. He knew it all. He knew what it was like to wander in the wilderness, the wilderness of sorrow and despair. So, while King David was no stranger to this desolation, he learned not to be afraid of it. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, he wrote, I shall fear no evil. For you are with me, your, ra- your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Incredible words of faith from King David despite all that he had been through. But I think they are especially faithful when we consider that he was living before the final and full revelation of Jesus Christ. He was living before God fully revealed himself in Jesus Many of you are familiar with security clearances in this area. That's a big big thing. To commission in the military or to work for certain government agencies, you have to be cleared as trustworthy to handle sensitive information. I believe there are three levels of clearance. Confidential, secret, and top secret. The higher up you go, the more you can know, the more you see. As Christians, we have top secret clearance. We have this greater perspective than even King David. The full revelation of God through Jesus Christ. That's what we have. As Hebrews succinctly teaches, Long ago, and at many times, and in many ways, God spoke to our fathers by the prophets. But in these last days, in these days, he has spoken to us by his Son, whom he appointed the heir of all things. Through him also he created the world. As members of the body of Christ, we are witnesses of God's full revelation. From our perspective, from what we can see and from what has been revealed to us. We not only trust that God is with us through the desolation, as Psalm 23 shows, but that he has overcome the desolation. He has taken it a step further. Earlier in Mark's Gospel, Jesus and the disciples are caught 
in a violent storm at sea. And Jesus stills the winds and the waves, bringing calm and peace to chaos. Today we read he feeds 5,000 people in the barren wilderness where there is no food, overcoming the desolation of hunger and need. He dies on a cross and rises, bringing life to the ultimate desolation of death. Jesus commands his disciples to rest in a desolate place because he wants them to know and for us to know beyond a shadow of doubt that there are no places where he cannot reach them, that he cannot reach us. In chaos, Christ is there. In uncertainty, Christ is there. In doubt, Christ is there. In temptation, Christ is there. In the valley of the shadow of death, Christ is not only there, but he has already overcome. Christ commands them into a desolate place to show them that they have a shepherd that knows no bounds. One of my favorite movies as a teenager, some of you may be able to guess this, featured the rise of a NASCAR driver. After his initial win, he was put in front of the camera for the very first time, and it showed. He didn't really know what to do in front of him. What do I do with my hands? He repeatedly uttered as he looked at his hands above his face. He was not able to handle the spotlight. We are called to go in peace and to serve the Lord. And whether we want to or not, or whether we want to be or not, we are in the spotlight. We are most definitely in the spotlight. In this world of uncertainty and division, in a world where desolation lurks around many corners, people are watching. They're watching to see what this Christianity is all about, what you are all about. In the spotlight, what do we do with this faith, with this full revelation? Of God. Perhaps it's not so much what we do with faith, but what faith does to us. Faith, writes Martin Luther, is an active, independent, and powerful thing. And if we want to truly evaluate it, he continues, we should call in. We should, we should call in and influence, we should call it an influence on us rather than an act performed by us. Faith is an influence on us rather than an act performed by us. The Mission, starring Jeremy Irons and Robert De Niro, featured a group of Spanish priests laboring to build a mission in the mountains of Portugal. After a couple of years, they had baptized most of the natives and built a wonderful church with a steeple and all. The Christian community there was flourishing. Tragically, however, a territorial dispute between Spain and Portugal pressured the mission to disband. They had to leave. They had to undo everything. But the priest decided not to abandon the mission and all that it stood for. Too much work and faithfulness had gone into it. When the Portuguese soldiers came to destroy this mission, one of the priests simply led worship. That's what he did. 
as fires raged and bullets flew. The priest processed out of the church with his congregation holding the cross up high in the spotlight in the spotlight faith in Christ who has overcome desolation gave them peace in the chaos and rest in desolation I have never forgotten that scene and I pray that I never will as baptized Christians who live a life of faith in, our, in the Spirit. We hope in the fullness of the kingdom where desolate places are vanquished once and for all. But as we live out our lives here and now, our faith gives us hope to find freedom, peace, and rest not necessarily from desolation, but in it and despite it. That's what our faith does. It can give us rest in desolate places. Thanks be to God. Amen. Volunteers coming on our mission trip next week, please come forward. You may be seated. Later this uh, week, our youth will travel to Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, to participate in a Week of Hope mission trip with group missions. They will be working in various community service projects throughout the Pittsburgh area. A reading from Romans. As in one body, we have many members, and not all the members have the same function. So we who are many are one body in Christ, and individually we are members of one another. We have gifts that differ according to its grace given to us. Prophecy in proportion to faith, ministry and ministering, the teacher and teaching, 
the exhorter and exhortation, the giver and generosity, the leader and diligence, the compassionate and cheerfulness. In the presence of this assembly, will you accept this commission and commit yourselves to the trust and responsibility and the confidence that comes from God? If so, answer, I will, and I ask God to help me. Will you carry out this ministry in accordance with the Holy Scriptures? If so, answer, I will, and I ask God to help me. I will, and I ask God to help me. Will you endeavor in all things to conduct yourselves as is fitting for an ambassador and servant of Jesus Christ? If so, answer, I will, and I ask God to help me. I will, and I ask God to help me. Will you be faithful, understanding, and loving as you accompany the people among whom you will live serve and work? If so, answer, I will, and I ask God to help me. I will, and I ask God to help me. People of God, will you support these youth and adults, these messengers of Jesus Christ sent by God to serve his people with the gospel of hope and salvation? Will you pray for them, help them, and honor them for their work's sake, and all things strive to live in peace and unity in Christ. If so, answer we will, and we ask God to help us. Let us pray. Gracious God, as you have called workers to vary tasks in the world and in your church, so you have called these youth members and adults to this ministry of service. Grant them joy and spirit of bold trust, that their work may stir up in each of us a life of fruitful service. Be your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, God bless and keep you, that you may be faithful in the ministry to which you have been commissioned. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Our service continues with the Apostles' Creed. Please stand. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray for the church, the world, and for all those in need. Almighty God, we thank you for planting in us the seed of your word. By your Holy Spirit, Help us receive it with joy. Live according to it and grow in faith, hope, and love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, you heal all who came to him. Be with our friends and family who are struggling with illness, sadness, or despair. Please send your healing touch to Julia Grease and Enchicado, Bruce Bathgate. Connie Kruby, John Ham, Tom Jett, Jerry Mori, Janice Thurman, Frank Williamson, and those we name in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Dear Lord, comfort with your presence all those who are homebound or alone, especially Carolyn Buttermeyer, Jean Clark, Henrietta Conklin, Alice Johnson, Eleanor Heckenborn, Betty Stroll, and David Zare. Remind them they are never alone. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious Father, safeguard all who serve our nation in the military, at home and abroad. We ask you especially to protect Master Sergeant Randy Ham during her deployment in Kuwait. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Dear God, bless.
bless our NALC sister congregation, St. Paul's Lutheran Church in the Seven Valleys, Pennsylvania. Bless them as you have blessed us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, bless all who travel during these summer months with safety. May they enjoy being refreshed. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Dear Lord, many in our country are grappling with extreme weather and wildfires. Protect and sustain them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands, O Lord. We commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy, to your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Let us share the peace of Christ. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Gracious God, we give you thanks for the faith that brings us here to experience the joy of Christian fellowship and community. We ask your blessing now upon our musicians that they may proclaim this good news through song and praise. In your name we pray. Amen.
us pray. Merciful Father, we offer, we offer with joy and thanksgiving what you have first given us, ourselves, our time, and our possessions, signs of your gracious love. Receive them for the sake of him who offered himself for us, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right and salutary that we should at all times and in all places offer thanks and praise to you. O Lord, Holy Father, through Christ our Lord, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection, opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with the church on earth and the host of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy. Blessed are you, Lord of heaven and earth. In mercy for our fallen world, you gave your only Son, that all those who believe in him should not perish, but have eternal life. We give thanks to you for the salvation that you have prepared for us through Jesus Christ. Send now your Holy Spirit into our hearts, that we may receive our Lord with a living faith as he comes to us in his holy supper. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. We do not presume to come to this your table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under your table. But you are the same Lord, whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, to abide in the body and blood of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, that our sinful bodies may be made clean in his body, and our souls washed through his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. Amen. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks. He broke it and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, he gave thanks, and he gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. Remember us, Lord, in your kingdom, and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The gifts of God, for the people of God, come taste and see that our Lord is good. Amen.
stand. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in His grace. Amen. bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.